Hello, welcome back to my channel. Um, I have a special review today. Um, this is an early release of the U.S. copy of The Red Thread of Fate, and I believe this comes out um, for everybody in the U.S. on December 25th, so Christmas. Um, this is a Korean coloring book. It's pretty pretty neat. It's a different kind of coloring book than I I usually get, so th this is pretty interesting to me. So this is the cover. Dimensions of this book are uh, let's see, nine by nine. So it's a nice little square. This is the back, and that is my cat. Um, here is the spine and the thickness of the book. Inside you have the front flap cover here that comes off, the dust cover, and I'm just going to take that off. It's easier for me to flip through the book without having this on here. And in the front here it tells just a little bit about um, the illustrator and I said Korean earlier, and I meant uh, Japanese. Um, it's a coloring book from Japan. I don't know why I said Korean, so sorry about that. And this little design on the other side of the dust cover. And then you have the book itself here, and the back is the same as the dust cover. So you have the informational page here, title page, and then the publication page off to the left. And then right here, I'm going to read this to you because I thought that this was pretty neat. It says, in the Orient, there is a belief that the gods, using an invisible red thread, connect every person with their distinct other. In Japanese legend, this thread is thought to be tied around the little finger of everyone on earth. According to this myth, the thread can travel everywhere, regardless of time, place, and circumstances, until finding its other end. It is also said that this magical thread may be twisted or tangled, but never broken. This book consists of four parts representing the four seasons. Spring, the birth. Summer, the flourishing. Autumn, the experience. And winter, the knowledge. On each illustration, the invisible thread is hidden, weaving through nature, culture, and the myths of tradition, of traditional and contemporary Japanese life. Sorry. Find and transform this invisible thread into the magical red one, while coloring the rest of the world it passes through using your imagination, and follow the red thread to find its destiny. So this is a pretty interesting coloring book, and I have had my eye on this for a while. And like I said, this is um, a pre-release of the U.S. copy. So on the first page here, you have the little finger with, with the thread tied onto it, and it just kind of goes. So this is more than a coloring book. It's an actual story um, without words, but it's really neat. And like they said, on each page, the thread is woven through um, different pictures and stuff in here. So I've, I've zoomed in as much as I possibly can um, to get the whole page on here. So we start with the, uh, the spring. And you can see on each page, it, they're supposed to be part of the string hidden. And like on the first page, it's wrapped around this little baby here. And on the second page, it's wrapped around right here. So I'm not going to go through each page and show you where each one is, because I think that's part of the fun of finding um, with this book. So it's, it's pretty neat. Uh, the pages are glue bound. Yeah, glue bound. And um, on this particular copy, you can see that the pages don't exactly line up all the way, but this is a lot better than some of the coloring books I've had um, that don't line up anywhere close to each other, like this far apart. So um, this is pretty decent.
and the page quality in this is is decent it's not really thin paper it's not cardstock paper it's somewhere in between and um, for books like this I, I recommend a watercolor will will work really well in this book um, just be careful with the water that you're using uh, make sure you're not drenching the page or anything and give it plenty of time to dry uh, before you either color over it with a different color or use colored pencils or something, some other medium on it. Um, just be sure you're giving it plenty of time to dry. Uh, that's one of the bigger mistakes that people with watercolor do. Um, they just don't give it enough time to dry. Um, so be sure you do that. Other than watercolor, colored pencils are going to do really well in this book because the pages are really smooth. And this this will allow... Um, a very smooth flow of the color on the pages. It'll lay down really nice. I've not tried anything in this book yet. And for those of you have, who have seen my reviews on um, coloring books and I've been using mediums in them um, to show you what mediums work best, these books that I'm getting ready to do today are not going to be in those reviews because... I got them after I'd already filmed the reviews, so these are not going to be in there. But I will do another a review like that later down the road once I get other coloring books to, to put into that group. So colored pencils, watercolors, gel pens will work great in here. I would not recommend using um, the alcohol markers um, however, it does seem like a lot of these pages have somewhat of a, like a, a, a page spread, and then on the other side, kind of a, a page that has duplicate things all over it. Um, so I think they've kind of prepared the book for alcohol markers or water-based markers, um, so you won't lose a really great drawing for example, this is a two-page spread here, and on the back of this side, it has uh, these little tops. And then on this side, it has these multiple drawings of these patterns. And with it being like this, you won't lose a really cool two-page spread on the other side. So they, they've kind of prepared the book for that. So um, that's pretty neat. I like that idea. But um, ink pens would work really well in here, too. Because of the page quality, a lot of mediums are going to work in these books. And here we have a flip-out design. That's one side. And that is the other side. When I first looked through this book, I was not too impressed with it. I thought, okay, this has a really neat pretense and it could have been a lot better. But as I flip through it again and again and again, I, I'm i kind of drawn to it. And I think it's a really neat idea, especially with the story behind it. I think it makes it a better uh, version of what I had originally thought. So it kind of uh, grew on me a lot. And I really like it. And I think it's a really neat concept um, for love and life and everything, just knowing that you know, if you believe in, in these myths and legends and stuff that, you know, you are destined to meet your, your true somebody and you're attached somehow and through time and space and everything, eventually you will find that person. I think that's a really lovely concept and pretty neat.
So this back part was kind of going through the different drawings without having them all on the page. Um, it kind of shows what what that is. Like this is a lucky cat. This is Mount Fuji um, Imperial Dolls for Girls Festival. Um, so on on the pages previous, you'll you'll see these drawing somewhere in the book and it kind of tells what what it is what they're for kind of thing and um the one thing i didn't like about the book is that there is no test page um and i am so pro test page it's not even funny um it really helps having that test page so in the case of having these in the back i will be using these as a test page and that is the end. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, this is called, again, uh, The Red Thread of Fate, A Color and Love Story. Um, and this is a Japanese coloring book. And I was sent this from the publisher um, as a pre-release copy to review on here. Um, so I did not purchase this myself. Um, it was given to me. Um, so thank you so much for watching. And... I hope you've enjoyed the video, and until next time, happy coloring.